Hello everyone, welcome back to Spar and Brawl. Hope you had a decent holiday, Christmas break, whatever it was. And now I'm back. I'm joined by my co-host, as per usual, Sam. Sam, how's it going? Everything good? Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, it's all good. To be fair, I, uh, you know, we we have to have, keep our international uh, perspective. So for many of us, it wasn't New Year or Christmas or anything. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Right. That's Maybe true. Christmas. That's very true. Here. Well, uh, in any case, 2020 started off pretty good for a lot of us, including Julian Assange supporters. So on Monday, a British judge actually refused the U.S.'s request to have him extradited to the United States for him to face espionage and hacking charges. But the mood changed a little bit today when the same judge, however, denied him bail. So if... If they already rejected his extradition, why would they deny him bail? Well, that's because I guess the U.S. has already launched the appeal, which will, um, they had 15 days to appeal the decision by the judge. So I think that's why he has to stay in prison in the first place. So he would have had to give bail in order to, you know, stay at home right now until the second one gets going. So the appeal gets going, which could have taken a long time. But unfortunately, that is not the case. He was denied bail today by the judge and he's going to have to, stay at the prison so before we get into the reason as to why the the judge denied denied bail we're first going to talk about the first decision by the by the the judge to not have him be extradited to the united states which on the face of it is really good and at the end of the day it is really good it saved julian assange from being sent to the united states however the reason for the ruling is a bit less rosy so we should remember that the judge had ruled in Assange's favor, not based on the argument that Assange would not get a fair trial in the U.S., but rather that the American prison wouldn't be able to stop him from taking his own life. So unsurprisingly, the Americans didn't have too much of a problem with the ruling, you could say. The Justice Department said in a statement that while we are extremely disappointed in the court's ultimate decision, we are gratified that the United States prevailed in every point of law. And as the BBC reported, the district judge Vanessa Baritzer explicitly concluded that Assange should answer allegations that he aided and abetted hacking, theft, and the disclosure of the identities of informants working for the U.S. security agencies. Disclosures that endangered their lives. Adding that in English law, that would be enough for him to be charged with a crime here, and so the route was open for Assange to face trial for the same in the United States. But British extradition law also requires a judge to consider Assange's health. So at the end of the day, the only thing that really saved him was his awful, I guess, mental state after being in at the at the Ecuadorian embassy for over seven years and everything he's gone through. So yeah, Sam, well, how did you feel when you first heard the news on Monday and now with the second ruling? Yeah, to be honest, the uh, first time I heard the news, I was surprised because from what I heard from the court hearings and the judge, everybody said that the judge was n not going to be looking favorably on the case, uh, not, you know, uh, looking favorably on Julian Assange. But uh, I guess you, if you were a legal expert, you may have been able to guess it because it kind of it was the best of both both words for the judge as in he kind of agreed with the US legal team while not allowing Julian Assange to be extradited so making certain groups happy but uh, as uh, i mean the reactions i saw i, I saw an article by Yanis uh, but by sorry Owen Jones and i saw an interview between um uh, Yanis Varoufakis and uh, British leftist uh, media presenter uh, Aaron Bastani and he, Yanis Varoufakis described it as the judge disgracing herself by uh, actually uh, agreeing with the legal points that the US courts make so I, I agree with that for sure I don't think the I, I feel like it was a cop-out, to be honest. Not that I'm sure, to be honest, Julian Assange, according to all sources, Varoufakis, one of the few people who met him in the last couple of months, they all describe his mental state as, you know, severely deteriorated. His physical health has severely de deteriorated naturally as somebody who's been pretty much in a 
confinement for the last 10 years. Uh, he's been separated from his family, his children. Um, yeah, it was, in, in a way, I'm glad he's not been extradited, but I'm still not happy in, that he's not been fully uh, exonerated, really. And uh, yeah, it's. I'm glad that at least maybe we are moving to the right direction. But we'll see, but we'll see. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm guessing him and his family were relieved regardless of what the reason was. But exactly, I mean, the judge agreed in every single way with the United States, except, I mean, they're in a way, I love the blame. It's like, you know, this guy's suicidal and stuff, you know, so we have to watch after him. Kind of feel like it's, you know, putting like more blame in a way on him and, you know, the U.S. prison system, they wouldn't be that good, so. Well, they, they but, yeah, now you he the judge, uh, you know, did not allow them to Epstein Julian Assange, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's good news because there's a good chance even if he didn't kill himself, somebody else would have killed uh, Assange self yeah. somehow. <laughs> but uh, it's not unlikely in U.S. prison. But, um, yeah, Ex it's, you know, it's a sad story because whatever, even if he, even if he does get exonerated at the end of the years, he lost 10 years uh, with his young children so i don't know i don't know how they ever gonna how you're gonna yeah it's at shitty. the very least and this could, he could have long long like term health repercussions given oh, uh, sure. what he went through okay so let's go back a little bit you mentioned one of the two reactions already there are more which we'll get into but i just wanted to get back to today's news a bit i found one or two funny things so the judge actually said this she said that as a matter of fairness, <laughs> the U.S. Mm. must be allowed to challenge my decision. <laughs> I mean, it's oh, true really? and stuff. It's just like such a funny statement. But anyway, so she denied him bail today because she says that is a flight risk. And the reason that they've argued, I believe, that he's a flight risk is because originally when they were after him in 2012 or so, and um, when he was going to get extradited, when they were trying to extradite him to, the, to Sweden, Right. And Sweden, he was he was going to face rape allegations and all this. And his fear was that they're going to send me to Sweden. And then from Sweden, they're going to send me in the United States. So the context was totally different during that time. Right now, as many have pointed out, best case scenario is for him to stay London in London. His fiance is here, apparently. His kids are all here. And this is where he's received protection right now. So it doesn't really even make any sense for him to go anywhere else but yeah that's what it's based on and today could have really been a third victory for him because this didn't get much coverage either but it was over a year ago i think in november 2019 when uh the swedish prosecutors completely threw out his case their reason was that okay too much time has passed now so you know there'll be recollection um recollection problems if we're going to bring back the allegers but at the end of the day, you know, that was a big hurdle. That was a huge hurdle in his way as well, which had nothing to do with all the allegations that he's facing right now. But yeah, today could have been a third victory for him, really, if you count that first one of at least those Sweden charges, whichever way it is, those allegations went away for him. But there was more uh, reaction. So first, I don't know if you heard this. Did you see how oh, next? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Just let me add this. Uh, yeah, I was following after I read the news about the ex, uh, about the denying of extradition. I started following it a bit more, you know, uh, trying to catch up with the events and stuff. And then I heard they're going to do the bailout appeal. And I was very glad because legally speaking, from what I know, at least, uh, you know, there was uh, you, you could have set a very high bail for him because he's obviously got certain connections and certain amount of money perhaps but the fact that they completely denied it on idiotic grounds that he know he has the where 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 is <laughs> where's with they use that term that yeah he can get out it, it's as if they're dealing with fucking james bond or yeah. something this is a yeah it's disgusting yeah just about the bail stuff i was very very like that was just you know it feels like they they can't do anything, so they try to, you know, whatever, whatever is in their, you know, they throw whatever yeah. they can, basically. So they, they just gonna try to, you know, twist the knife a yeah. bit wherever they can. No, exactly. I mean, logically, it wouldn't make sense because if he were to run away, he would have probably undone <laughs> the victory that he he got on Monday, and he'd be back in the in the same mess. So it kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah. On, uh, yeah. 
that's ridiculous. Yeah. And so actually this is related to that. So the Mexican president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, offered political asylum to Assange and he described them as a journalist and deserves a chance. He came out, though, subsequently afterwards said that, of course, that apparently, if I'm not mistaken, he added that this offer is once the it's completely the appeal is over as well. So just offering him asylum after that, which I mean, it makes sense. They're not going to get into some kind of fight he's with a, the uh, U.S. over this right now. Yeah, he's an interesting character because he's far more left wing than the previous guy. Uh, and then when he came about, everybody was like, oh, he's going to clash with Trump. But in fact, because he has a very negative relationship with media in Mexico, and apparently he uses the term fake news as well. Mm. And he's a bit of a eccentric figure and all that. So he's been uh, actually he has had a great relationship with Trump compared to a lot of other central and south and like a, a lot of other countries in that continent. So he's a bit of a yeah, he's a bit of a wild card. I was interested yeah that that was quite interesting that he came out so quickly and offered the bail asylum uh, sorry offered the asylum yeah interesting yeah no very true and i mean anyway we're not going to talk about that right now but trump also barely mentioned mexico and mexicans really this this time around this yeah. time around but yeah and then your friend sam jeremy corbyn of course called it good friend. news <laughs> but <friend>. said <laughs> but said it was alarming that the judge has accepted u.s government arguments threatening freedom of speech and freedom to publish cnbc just they were context cnbc they were contextualizing it and i and i love this first word so they talked about what happened they broke the news and then in one paragraph they wrote fans respect assange for exposing what they describe as abuse of power by the u.s but opponents believe blah blah blah. i love the use of the word fans i've never heard it's supporters it's celebrity yeah. yeah i know right <laughs> it's supporters okay you know, so now Let's get into probably one of the best reactions and statements I've saw. Did you did you hear about the UN statement? Oh, the I heard a little, but no. go ahead. I, no, not the details. The so torture. this is yeah, this is by the UN special reporter on torture, Neil Melzer. So he welcomed the court's refusal to extradite WikiLeaks founder to the United States. However, they added that at the same time, the judgment sets an alarming precedent, effectively denying investigative journalists the protection of press freedom and paving the way for the prosecution under charges of espionage. The statement goes on to remind us that the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Nils Melzer, has repeatedly expressed in individual communications and statement that Assange has been subject to more than 10 years of arbitrary detention and political persecution. During a visit conducted to Belmarsh Prison in 2019, where Assange is currently saying, Melzer and a specialized medical team found that Assange showed all the symptoms typical for prolonged exposure to psychological torture. Melzer added that the judgment fails to recognize that Assange's deplorable state of health is the direct consequence of a decade of deliberate and systematic violation of his most fundamental human rights by the governments of the US, UK, Sweden, and Ecuador. According to Melzer, the failure of the judgment to denounce and redress the persecution and torture of Assange leaves fully intact the intended intimating effect on journalists and whistleblowers worldwide who may be tempted to publish secret evidence evidence for war crimes, corruption, and other government misconduct. Finally, he added that Mr. Assange must now be immediately set free, rehabilitated, and compensated for abuse and arbitrariness he has exposed to. So, I mean, this is quite a powerful statement, if you ask me. But, of course, there are layers and layers and layers to the UN. And this comes from the UN Special Rapporteur on Nils Melzer. So in a way, this person is like the highest when it comes to the U.S. about torture, on torture. However, besides, you know, I don't know what concrete power he has or anything to change anything except, you know, maybe except expressing his opinion and putting um, putting the right narrative out there. But yeah, powerful, powerful statement. And I saw him. He was on France 24. We'll put a link to the video in the description box below. And again, he talked about why he why he's saying that Assange has been tortured and and all of that. Interesting. To be honest, when you were reading that and then you talked about the what effects it may or may not have, it reminded me. I don't know if you ever watched the Dave Chappelle show. 
uh, it was massive during the yeah. George Bush years. I highly recommend, by the way, if, if anybody wants to. Did, he used to do this black George Bush character, and uh, there is one uh, sketch he does which is fantastic, which uh, it's about UN apparently threatening to sanction America, or he says, oh, you want to sanction me with what army? And excuse my French, but he says that, yeah, uh, so shut the F up and, <laughs> you know, be quiet. <laughs> so not that I, I respect, I mean, I agree with their view here, and I yeah. think here they're correct. But the problem with UN is it's such a massive, as you said, organization and so many levels of bureaucracy and s- largely so ineffective when it comes to U.S. especially that it's just white noise yeah. to me. I don't know if that I don't know if that's the same guy. I saw something on DW, the German channel, that there was a lawyer. I don't know if he he was the same figure, but he was saying the exact same thing that the records show that he was uh, he was under psychological uh, torture, which is obviously yeah. different from what we have in our mind in terms of medieval torture. But yeah, uh, I hope yeah. I hope. They, the, these words and reports and stuff have some effects, but who knows? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, most of the power of the UN is with the Security Council. <laughs> and that's like a different story when it comes to these kind of rapporteurs. I mean, all they can do is really put out some information and facts large, for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's largely a mediation for, um, yeah. for, you know, global powers so yeah yeah especially we're talking about the security council but yeah i mean possibly with him talk speaking of the coverage actually uh, democracy now sometimes we talk we say democracy now is boring on the assange thing from day one i mean if you're pro assange guy they bring his lawyers and his supporters like every single time so i don't know oh, what their content is fantastic yeah it's just i personally yeah. found their style somewhat old-fashioned but that's it a yeah. stylistic so they're they're, they're great France 24, to my surprise, yeah, they brought yeah, yeah. the UN guy, they brought his lawyers. I mean, they had everyone. The guy was asking. Oh, they brought his lawyers? I didn't yeah. see that. I believe in the same video that we'll be posting. If I'm mistaken, in the same video that I'm going to post in the description box, starts with the UN person and then I believe lawyer or now family member or someone from his inner circle. But yeah, must double check. But I believe so. But anyway, yeah, good reporting by Let- them. Uh, the only thing about coverage I would add is that my old nemesis, Guardian, proved itself as all. Because you know what pisses me off, especially about Guardian, is that basically Guardian Online, was their reputation was built through Julian Assange and Glenn Greenwald and Edward Snowden, right? So it's extremely annoying when you see that the only thing they do is that they feature an article by Owen Jones and nothing literally nothing about this so yeah that was i like to point out their hip their not hypocrisy their ungrateful uh unfriendliness i suppose yeah no no 100 percent. and i mean if the guardian isn't gonna have you know a strong take on it like the article kind of you know if you want to find information covering it i found a bbc article yes they don't have a strong take on it but at least they had a long thing with all the facts and everything that happened. So there was a point to their article. <laughs> so the no, Guardian no, uh, is just like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, Guardian had important articles uh, like, uh, what was it? Yeah, idiotic articles like, I don't know, does computers give you corona? <laughs> it's just idiotic, hysterical things. I, I, I'm misquoting, so double check that. And get but yeah. To- Okay, so I just wanted to kind of wrap up the video with a few more factual things about the case that's going on. So what he's really facing, he's facing an 18-count indictment from the U.S. government, which accuses him of conspiring to hack into U.S. military databases to acquire sensitive secret information related to the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. If convicted, he could apparently be jailed for 175 years. But apparently the Americans have come out and said that it won't be more than 46 years. I don't know when he said that. And of course, Sam, as you remember, really like the most, perhaps like the most important thing that came out around 2010 or so was the footage that Chelsea Manning had given to him about the helicopter shooting and then the Reuters reporters getting shot and everything. And even the, I wanted to do a bit more on Chelsea Manning, didn't get to do on her, but she went through so much. She finally was set free last year, but I believe they came 
they came after her again. I'm not exactly sure, but gonna have to look that they, up they, I, for another video. I remember video. they at least questioned her uh, at some point due to her connection to Julian Assange. After she was, that, of course, had gone through everything and come after out of prison. She was, yeah, yeah, after she was freed yeah. and all that. Yeah. And I don't know if it went further than questioning, like holding her in, in a yeah. uh, custody or something. I don't know. But I recall that, that they tried to... I don't know if they're trying to tie Assange to... Because that's their case, right? They're mm -hmm. trying to tie Assange uh, to um, to actual hacking, you know, the, to helping to hack, helping to inf infiltrate, not helping whistleblowers. To so, counter you know, his journalism argument, I guess, right? Yes, Saying, like, yes, you see, you're not actually a journalist. Yes, exactly. You were hacking so, yourself. You're a foreign... But yeah, they have, they have a designated... WikiLeaks as a foreign terrorist organization mm -hmm. or foreign agent or something. Yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, Even I mean, though, as we've mentioned so many times, New York Times, Washington Post, everybody reported on all these stories and The Guardian back then. And I mean, this was huge. Now we've kind of forgotten huge, huge. about the Iraq war, you know, now they're trying to rehabilitate people like George Bush and everything. But if you if you just put yourself in where we were like 10 years ago in the beginning of the Obama administration, the Iraq war and everything that they revealed and the torture and everything that went on there was a much I bigger mean, and more important deal. You know, you all, I, I was always, you know, you, you, they always talk about that people have short memories and stuff, but Iraq war is not fucking finished even, you <laughs> yeah. know, or Afghanistan war, it's still going on and people already forgot about it. So that's a record of some kind, I think. But, no, 100%. You know. Yeah, yeah. Trump is withdrawing like I don't know one pair of pants at a time. <laughs> it takes him like <laughs> six years to apparently just take out like twenty five Americans. <laughs> I mean, There's although at the same time, I am somewhat like you do real. I mean, not that I so I don't support war, but if you gotta do war, I don't understand. They have like two thousand five hundred num people left in Afghanistan. <laughs> Afghanistan is a massive country. It's a huge country. How were you hoping to keep it safe or whatever? So it's clearly a, it's clearly an excuse for gun running and drug running operations. You know, with 2005, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not a military expert, but I can't see how you can hold a country as large as three times Germany, two times Germany, with 2,500 people. You know, it's yeah. I I, I don't know. I I re because I recall like in Viet I was watching a movie about Vietnam War, Trial of Chicago Seven. By the way, it's a fantastic movie. Uh, but, but like they had three hundred thousand people in Vietnam, and Afghanistan is I think same size or similar size. So yeah, I I don't understand it. What the fuck are they doing there? Why are they still there? Why there are only like five thousand? You know, like less than two thousand. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get anything. Yeah. Why do everybody forget about this war? No, yeah. I mean, of uh, course, some of it has to do with the way they count, right? So I guess they don't count contractors or they don't count this person and they don't count like all the kind of help they get from allies. And, you know, the Afghanistan itself oh, yeah, is yeah, on their side, technically. Yeah. American troops. Yeah. Not but I know. But still, I completely agree. Doesn't make much sense. But OK, back to Assange Assange. So what's next? Pretty much the U.S. is appealing what the fact that you know he's not getting extradited to the united states and now assange is appealing i believe um the fact that he yeah. wasn't given bail but then there's the biden administration they, coming in you know i couldn't see that do you know if he's appealing the judge's ruling regarding the uh, like laws that the judge agrees like I don't believe he's a. I, that's not what I've heard. I've heard that, yeah. Right. He's not appealing anything on Monday, at, from what I understood. That's the US, of course, appealing. And the US can, they're only appealing that one thing. So now apparently everything is out, everything else is out of the window. And they're just going to talk about whether he would be safe in a US prison. I, I guess, right? So just that All one right. ruling. And yeah, he's going to appeal if he can, um, you know, set bail. But yeah, Sam, you were saying that you've heard that just to wrap it up, that perhaps the Biden administration is kind of going to let this let this the, go. It's the, not worth it for them anymore. This was a press conference that uh, the, one of Assange's lawyers was speaking, and he was saying that there are already talks that 
it's already the process has taken too long and so much resources has been spent on it that U.S. may actually a parallel to the movie I mentioned, Trial of Chicago 7, those people got actually, they got convicted in the trial, but the trial then was, you know, they appealed the trial and then the trial was announced not, you know, not legal, basically, didn't meet their standards. And then the government stopped basically continuing the process, so they didn't get prosecuted again. So... I have a feeling that there is a good chance that same thing would happen with Assange because Obama didn't uh, try to, I mean, I hate Obama, don't get me wrong, but he didn't go as far as Obama's administration, It's uh, Trump's administration, which makes sense. Trump's administration had a far more negative uh, relationship with the media and the people around Trump are basically, a lot of them are basically, uh, they they are not liberals in a sense that yeah. they don't believe in freedom of speech as a necessarily right or whatever. So that's uh, in a way I think and partially hope that uh, Joe Biden lets this go and then yeah we are done with this. Yeah, exactly. That will be best case scenario. I mean, if he does, if he makes oh, such a decision, case, yeah, best case scenario is a judge that actually rules in his favor. But <laughs> yeah. that's not gonna happen. But exactly, like. Now, it doesn't seem like the case. But okay, all right. So if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in our next video. Thank you.